The future of video game entertainment is the ultimate in interactivity. Why just play the game when you can play inside the game? Renee San Miguel from CBS Market Watch is here to give us a little preview. This is fascinating. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, they actually created my evil twin for uh -oh. this story, so this is going to be pretty scary. We all know somebody who's really into their computer or really into their video games. Technology companies, including one of the biggest in the world, are right now working on ways to actually make that happen, to digitally put your face, your image, onto computer-generated characters. The technology is called face mapping, and I decided to see what it would be like to be a ghost in the machine. Why should today's star athletes or Tomb Raider's Laura Croft have all the fun in video games? Maybe I'd like a shot at virtual immortality. I call. Yes, that's your friendly neighborhood technology reporter becoming one with technology. Microsoft has transported me into a wicked game of poker with company chairman Bill Gates and CEO Steve Ballmer. Boy, you thought these guys were tough competitors in real life. So, how did I get in here? I can feel myself being digitized as we speak. Microsoft researcher Michael Cohen did this by mapping my face using his experimental software, a small PC camera, and your basic run-of-the-mill computer. I'm not the only digital guinea pig in here. Whether it's one of the richest humans on the planet... Uh, some people have called this E.T. Bill. I was about to say he turns a little, little, little like an alien there. ...or yours truly, the software creates the same thing, a collection of digital points to build a wireframe model. Then it adds some texture. The result? It's a little scary, i got to tell you, Michael. My own eyes right now are creeping me out. If you really want to get creeped out, I suppose we can <laughs> look around the back here. The eyes may be the windows into the soul, but the researchers are still perfecting the process. So far, only the big special effects companies like Industrial Light and Magic have been able to afford the hardware and software necessary for creating digital characters like Jar Jar Binks. But in a couple of years or so, Microsoft hopes consumers will be able to create a clone or avatar of themselves for a variety of uses. One of the things we're hoping to be able to do with this technology is to be able to allow people to communicate with each other uh, in, in a natural way, in a way that, that, that allows them to feel after it's happened that uh, they really connected with somebody. Captain, that's highly illogical. Other body parts are proving to be a challenge, but in the process, software magicians are learning a lot about the body's hardware. There's a, a huge uh, amount of, of uh, information in a person's face. Uh, you don't really tend to think of it that much, but, but the, all the nuances, uh, the little muscle movements, uh, the little textures in the skin, the hair, it's very hard to do them in real time. Figuring out how to do it uh, in a way that uh, can be immediately mapped you know, into an image that you can see on your, on your personal computer, um, that's actually pretty hard. While Microsoft is using only a single digital camera, a company called 3Q is using several cameras in kiosks it's now testing in San Jose, Seattle, and Dallas. For $15, gamers can walk into a kiosk, have it take their picture, and five minutes later it burns a CD, allowing face-to-face -face battles with monsters in games like Quake 3 or Unreal. What we find in the booth is once one person uses it, there's a crowd around it, and everybody finds the entertainment to produce the image itself. Um, something quite exciting, because very few of us actually have seen ourselves in 3D. It's been so difficult to do in the past, and we can't look underneath our nose or those angles. And we start to see features on our face which, uh, which leave us speechless. Face mapping technology may be all fun in games, but it also has practical applications lending itself to the worlds of medicine and retailing. As far as journalism goes, I may have to face facts. This guy could put me out of a job. Renee San Miguel, CBS Market Watch, for the Saturday Early Show. See, he's already taking Scary. over here. Some immediate uses for face mapping. Imagine your face not only popping up in your favorite video or computer game, but greeting someone on email or taking care of business in a video conference or trying on hats or eyeglasses on an e-commerce website. Women can try on cosmetics, for example. Face mapping may end up being a real alternative to the real you. No kidding, but how did this actually get started, this technology? In, in the medical field, uh, trying to use it for diagnosing conditions and diseases of the face. They've moved it over to entertainment, and it'll go back to medicine. And you can imagine a plastic surgeon mm -hmm. mapping your face and then showing you what you would look like post-surgery. Wow, amazing. But some nightmares there, I bet, too. I know. I'm going to have some nightmares about my evil twin. <laughs> Renee, thanks so much. Sure. It's time now for some of you to join your local stations. For everyone else, the Saturday Early Show will be right